Hello there everybody, welcome back to episode 11 of my tutorial series for Songs of Six version 66. Well, where are we now today? We are sitting in front of a very, very well running city. It is not that well organized, but it has pretty much everything that we can wish for at this point. The next steps are now not as clear anymore as they were before. What I'm trying to get down towards with is that at this point you have a lot of freedom where you want to develop your city towards to. We have basically all the basics covered now. We're making our own booze, we're making food, we're making clothing, we're making several items that we can use for trade, pottery, clay, and every city will be a little bit different on that end. It's very much dependent on the resources that you have drafted on your starting tile, how you will go for your future at that point. Either way, you will now have a lot of uh, freedom of choice, so to speak, on how to develop your city. We are going today over all the things that you need to keep the city stable at that point. Because I think I, I don't need to explain to you anymore how, um, for example, smelting works. Because it's basically just like charcoaling, just with ore and coal. These technologies that process one good into another, I think the, the, the basic processes are by now clear enough and we don't need to add too much into it. Now, today I want to grow as close as I can to the 500 people. You are technically now just about to leave the early game at that point. Yeah, it sounds a little bit hard to believe, but uh, we are just still in the infancy of the game. We will, at 500 people, unlock the ability to influence the world around us. That will unlock the ability to generate um, diplomatic power that we can use to influence the world with. But before we can get there, we need to get the city stable somehow. It'd be darned easy to just now accept all those immigrants and uh, get my city into, into chaos. So what we are needing next is technology. This lab here is already running at its full capacity, so we're just going to copy a lab, an identical lab, and set it right next to the first one. I often end up with making these little lab districts of sorts, where I have a cluster of laboratories together, because I personally like to do this so I know where I can crank around the numbers, but there is, as far as I know, no, no real benefit of doing it like that. We need, at this point, as much new technology as we can get. And checking back at this lab, we have three and a half uh, thousand. And if we calculate together the available versus the allocated tech, it becomes pretty clear that we are already very, very close to our, to our cap. At that point, it is imperative that you start expanding your capacities because technology is really what makes your city grow. Without technology, you, you, you be, you'll be so darned inefficient over the course of the time that it'll be a real issue for you. So we are going to need to buy some cut stone and leather armors in between while we're finishing those guard posts. But it is not a pressing matter as of now. I'm going to save up the denaris and let the lab have the priority here first. All in all, the industries are all going well at that point. I strongly rec recommend you to, to just don't grow too fast at once, as money is a real, real, real issue here at that point. Um, the thing is, we earn money by exporting our overproductions. But there is not a single good that we are exporting that we are not using by ourselves. So that means whenever a material goes under strain, the income of that drops off. What happened to me quite often is that I found my income therefore very, very inconsistent. And once you start to have consistent expenses, like importing stuff regularly, this, uh, oh, this can trigger a really, really nasty spiral. Therefore, we're keeping it on the end that we are making things more efficient for now by adding more tech. So... <clears throat> I don't know what they still need to do here. So. 
so... Alright. This is one of the cases where I'm pretty sure... Ah, yeah, they're still clearing. They're clearing the stone off of that last grid. That's what they're doing. Find it sometimes quite hard to see what is uh, holding them back or holding them off, but well. Now, we're going to not accept this entire bulk of people. We have by now a city that is uh, running so well that we can easily pick up more people than we can safely host or stomach. This is something which uh, you should really be darn careful about, because it can easily really break your game. <clears throat> okay. Adding in a few more houses, because we are dropping low on housing capacity. We are also, by now, producing all the materials to upgrade our fishery. So we're going to get a little bit more income here. Alright. A drought event. Well, that is the reason why you want stockpiles of your grain. A drought event does lower the fertility, I think. At least it does lower the income from your farms. You see how it plummets here. All the way down. Because of the loss of moisture. <laughs> yep. That's, that, that's the effect of a drought. It's pretty brutal, isn't it? But since we have more than 3,000 pieces of grain in our stockpiles, I'm not afraid about that at all. But as you can see here, these little events, again, they can really, really kick you hard in where it hurts. <laughs> now, let's go over our sweet tech points. We got now 500 points and there is, uh, let's see, how much is coming in here? A thousand in total. We are now looking for options to upgrade either or existent structures and make them stronger so we get more out of what we already got or we unlock new services starting with the cheapest going to the most costly ones. So one of the most cheap ways of adding in more service is unlocking the hospitals for fun for good down here the other technologies they are all not too costly at least uh, medicine and psychology is not but they are all still pretty much on the cost heavy side but we have left the realm of cheap services that we can add into our city we can now go either for fine dining and locking the restaurants being even more costly tech point wise we can unlock tourism, but uh, that is uh, not even possible without fine dining. Or we go for tombs, which are here again, 1.8k. Then we got, well, a grand arena, but uh, that's far out of reach. And worshipping with style allows us to upgrade our shrines. And then there's grand temples, but these are also darned costly tech point wise. All in all, there is not much cheap things left to unlock. And we're going to go over the healthcare technology. Healthcare is providing two things. First of all, it makes your people again happier. And the second thing is you will not have people dying left and right whenever an accident happens or, or something like that. Therefore, it's a pretty good investment. But it requires a lot of materials that we don't have natively. So let's get started. I'm going to put down the hospital down here in the artisans district. And I'm making it really, really small. Because the hospital is one of the most costly buildings that I know of. We're going to go for this format. And, well, where are we? Let's see. Here again, I'm aiming to get a even number of employees in here. As even as possible, that is. Let's make it done like that. And you see we need new materials. First off, we need tools. We haven't had tools yet. Tools are made mostly out of metal. That's pretty much summing up quite decently. Tools are also used for many, many other things. And if we don't configure things accordingly, Let's see, you 
click here into the hammer icon and uh, equipment tools. Let's see. All right. They are. Uh, all right. It, it has been changed. Okay. Okay. So in the previous versions, there has been a configuration that uh, all workshops were grabbing tools right from the get go, but that is not a thing anymore. Perfect. And we have a record low on temperatures. So first of all, let's buy those tools. If you come from previous versions, you would have needed to tell them not to use the tools for themselves because the previous versions had a baseline consumption of tools. Basically, it works a lot like booze, where your people draw the stuff out of the, the, the warehouses to sustain your own needs. But I'm going to host an entire episode about tools and work priorities and all those things so i'm going to skim it at this point only we're looking for of course the tools at our neighbor's ease because you see that is the best thing to the best place to look for it'll cost us not too much money and we're going to spend just some sweet sweet denarii here there we go at this point, I think it is absolutely valid to build uh, its own warehouse into this region. Down here, we in the Artisans District, Bombers District, something like that. By the way, at this point, feel free to build your buildings out of stone as well, because uh, there is, as a matter of fact, a happiness fulfillment out of stone buildings higher than out of wooden buildings. They also cost you less, um, they, they degrade slower, so they cost you less workforce on the janitors. It's two things that are worth mentioning here. So I'm not dumping my tools now into any other warehouse because I'm waiting for that new one to be built. And as you see here, the drought is totally killing our stockpiles this year. That is, by the way, why I had such a massive warehouse for grain to begin with. Because these things, every farming good, can be destroyed by events like these. Therefore, be prepared. It helps a lot. Mm, so, we're opening up a tool crate, and we're also opening up an opiate tra uh, crate. So you see, the hospital does need uh, anesthetics to work. You don't want to have that operation running on you without any. Believe me, you don't. So that means you need to provide a steady supply of these. So let's head on over to the logistics menu and build an import depot. It's going to go right next to the hospital as well. There we go. So the doctors can't work without opiates and fabrics. Fabrics we are providing. We, we probably need to notch up the numbers at the weaver. But, uh, well, what an extreme year that it, this is. <laughs> but the opiates, on the other hand, we need to import now regularly and that's what the import depot is good for obviously you could also just keep ordering it at your neighbor's ease manually and just keep going like that no problem but uh, i personally don't like the micromanagement of that so first of all we need to check out there is the uh, is that a yearly consumption no that's a daily consumption so you see that this place has a daily consumption rate now let's see, does our fabric production rate hold up to that? No, it doesn't. So we're going to put up two new weavers as well. And we're now going to configure this thing to import opiates for us. Here you can now set up how high the stockpiles should be held. For this regard, we only have one crate in the entire city holding opiates. So I'm telling them to hold up a stockpile of, let's say, 50%. That's 40 pieces of opiates. That is a stockpile that will last for more than 15 days. That's the year's, year's worth of uh, medicine in the stockpiles. And I think that works just well. 
And that thing now works automatically. It does not need any external workers or anything. It fires off an order at your neighbor's place and then they'll send the trader to your import depot where they will drop off the goods and then your people will pick them up and uh, transport them accordingly. That's how it works. All right, that all being said, we have now a medicinal support in the city and you can again see that this does provide some safety. Although you also can see the impact is relatively low onto the happiness itself. This is balancing wise because you, I think the, the dev's intention lies in the fact that you are not supposed to be rewarded too much for a building that already fends off events that kill people. So it's just a slight nudge, but I can only say I personally feel like it is a must have at some point because it surely feels odd to just let your people die whenever a uh, bad illness breaks out, right? So, we're going to go today over a super secret noise pr protection tech that I've learned, and we're going to build a couple of uh, houses here. This goes, uh, here, here the kudos go down to the, uh, to the comment section because you guys are just freaking brilliant. Just let you want to let you know. So noise. Um, you have a noise overlay here, and you see that these houses here are in the vicinity of noise. I did that accidentally here as well, but I hear I can't. Uh, I I have messed it up logistically. So what we can do now is we go on over to the structures menu, and here we can now just build a piece of wall. Let's see or we want just wall and we put it up right there watch what that does to the noise sure the people here now have to walk around the wall to get to the artisans places but we effectively blocked off all the noise off of the uh, workshop here we can here see though that the Walls here also block off the noise somewhat, but we could now try. I want to try if this works here too. There we go. It's a wee bit odd in terms of uh, oh, delete jobs. It's a wee bit odd in terms of uh, looks and in the in the city um, design, but sure is effective but you notice that it needs to be a complete wall to to do the to do the noise blocking but these houses are now effectively no longer hassled by the noise just as something that you can work with i mean here i did a horrible job in implementing it organically i i forced it in as brutal as i could you can do better than that i'm pretty 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 sure about this and uh well i just showed you the tools this looks terrible so next up we need more technology points let's check back what our food production rate looks good so we're going to authorize 20 more people yes the numbers are growing higher and higher but we're picking up now and we're going to assign 10 more of these into the labs we just need desperately more tech points tech points are currently one of the most important currencies that you got in the in this phase of the game don't though go into the fool's trap to save up too many points for the improved laboratory tech this really pays off at the third lap to my own experience unless some balancing has changed in b66 that i've overlooked so far three labs have been for me the sweet spot three labs of this size so roughly around 100 scientists and then you go for the upgrade with the humans, technically you could go earlier, as they are super effective at sciencing per se. They are really good at this. It's an uh, excuse for them being criminal minds as well. So our hospital now will fend off any diseases and other nasty things that pop up every now and then, and that is exactly what we want to have. So, next thing that I want to try to unlock is fine dining. Let's see how much we need to accelerate time to make that happen. 
science also I feel as if it is earned slower than before. In previous versions I had the feeling as if science had been earned faster, but that could be just me. But you see there, it's going steadily upwards. I still wish we could see the grand total of uh, of pool somewhere here. Like, I, 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 ah, here. All right, at least, uh, uh this is, uh, yeah. I hope the user interface will, will see some change one day at that end. Because that's what's bothering me the most, that I have such a hard time to see how much tech in total do we have. So as you see here, I'm not changing anything. I just let the industries run. There is a, a real benefit behind this strat. You fill back, you fill your your stockpiles of pretty much everything back up. We also should have, uh, well, we still haven't fully recovered from that drought, have we? Ah, oh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not fully noted yet, but uh, yeah, now, now they now. So let's move on over to restaurants. Pretty cost intense tech, but it is also so much worth it as, well, it provides quite the happiness spike. We are going to build now our first restaurant here. And the, the most wonderful thing about restaurants is also they are not too complicated. They basically just work like a food stall on crack. And they are, at the same time, something that you don't need to spam as heavily as you need to uh, spam other services. Your subjects will still want to um, eat at the food stall on the street. That is something they enjoy as well. They wouldn't enjoy to have to only eat at restaurants. So don't overdo it, but at the same time, make them not too small. So we're here trying to provide here as many spots as possible. Well, probably... Probably I messed it up a wee bit, eh? So we're going to remove one of those cooking stations and make it a little bit smaller. Here we go. This place costs you pottery and metal, so it is a pretty costly thing. We need to barter for that metal at our neighbor's place, or at this point you might as well also be able already to produce it yourself. You could produce it the same way as I do produce pottery, and if that be the case, I bet you'd be importing pottery instead. But it is always as it is. You can't do everything at once in your city, and trade is a vital part of the gameplay, so it's fine. It's intended, it's what it's supposed to be, and uh, we're, uh, we're just riding the wave here. What I also do realize is that our wood stockpiles are depleting again. This is a recurring phenomenon because I don't have enough woodcutters uh, employed slash I don't have enough woodcutting technology implemented. You can change that for yourself by going that way. It's also not too much of a costy tech and it brings up a lot of uh, benefits. It also unlocks a tech that allows you to lower the consumption of wood of your industries, which is seriously powerful. But, well, just a side note. Mm, okay. So criminality seems to be okay at this point. I think I need to buy these goods between the episodes at some point. And that restaurant now does take literally basically forever because there is a huge stone deposit on the building site which blocks our workers for a pretty darn darn long time. But I can show you at this point at the services the difference between a restaurant and a food stall. As you can see here the meters are... the meter is much higher. That means the restaurant will fulfill or will provide a ton of happiness. It's one of the biggest happiness providers that you can have. 
Also, I noticed that my bread stockpiles are full, so we're doing the only logical thing. We're starting to export that stuff. Whenever you notice that one of your goods that you are constantly regener regeneratively producing is going into the reds, you start exporting it. It'd be a shame to not to. Just not to find out where I do store my breads at this point. Is it back there? Yes. So we're uh, going to pull from this place. And we're going to export bread. Now we're going to limit that to only sell away like 80% of our total capacities. There we go. This will get a lot of money. And it'll also avoid that the that the bread will just rot in more stockpots. Something I really don't like. Okay. So one of the things I feel like is that V66 makes you work a lot harder for your tech points. I feel as if tech points were a lot easier to, to achieve in the previous versions. That's my personal impression so far. But don't get me wrong, technology always has been a very, very labor-intense uh, business. So, we become colleagues. You will trade and also pledge to not attack each other and respect each other's sovereignty. Well, it's a pretty costly deal, but whatever. I wanted to try that out anyways. This is a new kind of agreement that uh, has been implemented with V66. V66 has a lot of new diplomatic uh, options that weren't a thing before. So let's authorize the restauranteurs. And you see 12 chefs are working in here. Jeez, that's crazy. But at the same time, you will also notice that these 12 chefs will now provide an insane spike of uh, service happiness in the city. Whoop up we go. There it goes. So that's what I'm talking about. These are amazingly powerful. To get our service package uh, fulfilled completely, we're also going to copy one of them bathhouses and we are going to set up another one right here at the uh, canals. So this is a nice and nifty little trick. You just use your your irrigations to spread your bathing systems. Can strongly recommend as it lowers the costs of the whole endeavor quite a lot. It's my personal go-to strategy at that point. But we are also quite low on denaries, as you might notice, because we have bought ourselves into a quite costly partnership with the neighboring tilapies. That's how we'll hope it'll pay off. Our cotton is slowly going into net negative. That's something we need to work around as well at some point. And let's spread some streets. Our subjects have more than enough stone to work with. And I'm pretty sure everybody wants to visit the bathhouse. Those route, uh, roads also keep your people happy. Okay. So I'm going to be building those uh, buildings between the episodes. What the gist of this episode is all about is that you need to now go carefully down the road of more tech. You basically want to involve always a new kind of uh, innovative service that'll help you to grow your city. Then we go and check on out that the food production rates are okay. And then we crank up the science production yet again. Rinse and repeat while the city grows. Of course, I'll be uh, I'll be accompanying you while we're doing this trip. But that all being said, it is time to say goodbye for today. So, my friends, thanks for watching. I don't know where we're going next episode as of yet. I just know that there are a couple of things that we're going to have to take care of quite soon. There's a lot of upgrades that we need to make, and there is also a lot of teching, uh, technology to be uh, researched. I'm going to look it up in the episodes in between. Drop me your comments down below, and leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Also, feel free to subscribe, 
and in the description box you can also find the direct link to this entire playlist so if you want to just uh whip it up like that. There's also in the description box my Discord server, my Twitch where I do stream quite regularly, and of course there's also ways and means to support the channel. Big shout out to all of you who support this channel directly, I deeply appreciate, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching it to the end, and see you all next time. Bye bye.